audio for the weekly lesson entitled Free Entry to Museums and Galleries. The Universal Access Scheme, which granted free access to all government-sponsored museums, art galleries and some places of national interest in the UK, began in December 2001. This was known as a DCMS scheme, since the government department responsible for these places is currently called the Department for Culture, Media and Sport, DCMS. Research claims that free entry to these places are key motivators for tourists visiting the UK. By removing entrance fees to these places, everyone, including tourists, has free access to a type of education which only the arts and a dialogue about living history can bring. Culture and the artistic endeavour has long been a bone of contention in the UK because it is difficult for any progressive capitalist government to see how the arts, including a celebration of history, could generate an income which could be sustainable, stable and contributory to the economy. As a result, funding for artistic projects and endeavours is often cut when money needs to be saved. Yet there is a beauty in our history, not because it is history itself, but because of its endurance and stamina, which in part, at least, has been preserved through our museums, art galleries and ongoing projects. It is this historical archive which our government has made available to millions by removing entrance fees. Although sculpture, poetry and art sit well these days with religion and government, throughout history they endured a relationship which was rather more acrimonious. The government wanted money to ensure priceless objects could be preserved, so charges seemed to be a natural way to achieve that goal, and in doing so reduced art down to a commodity which could be used as a tool of investment. As less and less British people find religion relevant, the established church has relied upon its collection of arts and artistic expression for people to relate to it, as well as ensuring its financial future. Poetry and art had often been used in history as tools for revolution, in that they could reach the minds of people in a way that far exceeded reading or classroom education, a more direct, living, dangerous way which could stir the masses quickly. Preserving our history for the educated classes seemed safer and more controlled. Yet a less industrial, more liberated generation of British people needed to have access to maintain their British identity in an increasingly diverse society. Along with that, many people started to question how some of the items were acquired, particularly during the years of the British Empire, and why we were not allowed to see them. Today, in British society, the letter of the law sits perniciously with people being quick to judge, imprisoned for wrongdoings, ensuring an upright society, based on basic moral rules of right and wrong, good and bad. Yet art, with her expression and beauty, often sits above the law as a metaphor of rules and how minds can be elevated far above the latter into something much deeper. A metaphor which takes us into the spirit of the law and what it means rather than the cold, hard pen on paper. 
An example of this may be seen with the push for Scottish independence, a debate which is largely legalistic, documented and controlled. Strangely lacking art, expression, poetry or creativity, which could have had a quicker and stronger impact on the movement. Keeping it at the level of theory keeps emotions controlled, but restricts progression too. The balance between preserving history and appreciating art can be seen clearly in the decision to make museums and galleries free in the UK. However, in a changing economy, ever-changing societies and ideologies, the future is uncertain. Society now has more disposable income than before, and money is often donated freely to causes deemed worthy. With an increasing bill every year, funding our artistic history may not continue to be the government's top priority.